Uh, and lastly, or, or last two, I spoke about, I spoke about spiritual loneliness earlier on. It's talking about emotional loneliness. You know, spiritual loneliness is just uh, you, you just feel an over, overall feeling or sense of detachment from everyone. You just don't seem to connect with them. You can't understand it. You can't really put it this or that. It's just a sense of not feeling it with people, right? And um, it's a feeling that your life is incomplete and lacks a meaning. It's a vague sense of longing that you can't say what or who you long for. You know, just that feeling of a uh, wolfness, right? There's you can do something about it. Sometimes uh, the whole lot is because you don't know yourself. You know, so one one of the ways you help yourself get out of spiritual loneliness is beginning to discover yourself, discover who you are. You know, that will tell you that you're no strange person. It's been a, it's been a, it's been an awesome adventure for me discovering who I am. Right, probably one of one of the biggest things that has revolutionized my life. You know, I used to think I was a strange person and there was only one of me. But the more I do study on personality, I I, I get to find out that I, I've been well studied. All right, I've been well studied. There's nothing new under the hair that there's nothing new under the sun concerning me. I've been well studied, right? And I can read about studies concerning me and I can then learn how to do me better. You're right, and everyone can do that also. You right, we've all been well studied, you know, and we can do better as we get to know ourselves better, right? So I, I see Toba logging in. Uh Hey, Toba, how are you doing? I'm good. Happy Sunday, sir. Happy Sunday. Bless your heart. Good, yeah, good to have you and see that your network is good. Yeah. Okay, good. How have you been? It's been great. Just busy all this while. I've not been able to come along. Uh, God, busy is good. Busy is good. Ah, it is well, it is well. So we, we're presently in chapter four of the book. We're looking at the good life and uh, we're talking about social fitness, you know, and social fitness, you're talking about ability to be able to make and maintain relationships. That's all. And today we're talking about loneliness, what it means to be lonely, you know. So we're talking about different types of loneliness, you know. So I just finished talking about spiritual loneliness. The next one is existential loneliness, you know, uh, where people feel a sense of, you know, separation from everyone else and the world as a whole. You know, that's what makes people go commit suicide. You know, they just feel that they have no connection to the, to, to everything else. You know, have you, is that, is that something you've heard about? Have you seen someone that's lonely before? Sure, sure. Yeah. So, uh, any any example you want to share of someone being lonely? Uh so like someone I know, <clears throat> I think in his in his case, it's well. Like people used to say that sometimes you might have someone or people around you, and you can still be lonely. Absolutely. It was that was the example of that person then we were together, but I could see that it was it was uh, like suffering depression, I think, because he was not talking. If you ask him questions, he hardly give you an answer, or he he has a programmed answer, like somebody just giving. Maybe you say, "How are you?" Is just fine. I is today yeah. fine. I is everything fine. So it's like the same answer for almost every question. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. opening up. And yeah. then unfortunately, someone that seems he should he was opening up to passed on. So with that, it makes it difficult for him to open up to any other person after yeah. the demise of that close power. Absolutely. Yeah. So I saw that even though there were other people around, there were people who seemed to be interested, it will not open up to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, loneliness is not real. Loneliness is a perception. 
It, it's the way he sees the world. It's, it's a prism through which you see the world. You know, it's a feeling that uh, people don't understand you. It's a feeling that, you know, there's a separation between you and the people around you. They, they You can't tell them the things that are important to you. They won't understand. You know, it's, it's a judgment that the person has made. So it has nothing to do with, you can have a crowd around you and still be lonely if you think that, they they don't appreciate the things that are important to you, right? Or so so that case you're talking about is what we'll call a chronic loneliness, because loneliness at this simple level is a symptom that the person is not having the right social engagement, right? So the person can do something about it because it's just a symptom. It's just like hunger. When you feel hunger pain, it means that you are hungry. You go and eat. Right, but if you don't eat, then you can go on to starvation. Right, the same way loneliness tells you that you're not rightly engaging socially. Right, so if you do something about that feeling or that initial perception, you'll come out of it. But if you don't do anything about it, it begins to take residence on the inside of you and it can get to a place where it becomes a part of you. That's what they call chronic loneliness. And it's more difficult to come out of it once it's chronic. Because even when you want to come out of it, you almost inadvertently do things that will make you not come out of it. Because your whole system is wrapped around wanting to keep that status quo. You don't want to keep it, but your system is wrapped around keeping that status quo. You begin to do the things that are not you don't want to do just because your system is trying to stay within that status quo. So you have to, it takes more, to, you have to double your effort to come out of it. If you don't intentionally stand up to come out of it, you cannot come out of it. Because at that point in time, you're a prisoner of it. You have been held captive. You're a lawful captive of loneliness at that point in time. You, you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Some of the signs of, of, of loneliness, you know, is, you want to say something? No, I have a question, but when you oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Ask your question. I I don't know. Maybe you might have treated it before in some sessions that I might have missed, or maybe you still have intention of doing that. Mm -hmm. But my question is, how do we help people like that? How do we, and if possible, in fact, this has been in my mind for long. I've been wishing I have a time to equally ask you if you can equally share your, your practical experience of how people in that state can be helped, can be, because I know it also deals with, apart from that person being lonely, I could sense some forms of depression. And uh, like immediately I came, on, came in now, I remember a few minutes later you were talking about some having suicidal thoughts and the like. And uh, at the time when someone who happened to be a psychologist interview, that person that I was talking about, one of the questions mm -hmm. that you would ask was, do you at any time having thoughts of going to commit suicide? And surprisingly, this person said yes. Yeah, and yeah, it's yes. a Christian. You know, I, I yeah. was really surprised. Like, wow, so this is as serious as it is. Okay. So I have, at some point, he has called on me to help him. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe because I wasn't so skilled in that area, it was not something I really handled so much. I got confused. Mm -hmm. That was not mm -hmm. so much I do. I had to talk to some psychologists who are friends in the church, who are professionals mm -hmm. to their own advice. So, but I want to ask, mm -hmm. how do we help people like that? Because... At instances, at least I've met close to two or three. In fact, there was a time I have two core members who are in my mm. church, and I discovered that they were psychologically disturbed. In fact, when we come mm. to church, he will not talk to anybody, and he will not allow you to get... At the time, he started living alone. We don't even know where he's living, and he will always be in church. Mm. Yeah. All right. We'll, 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 
I have some I have some things on date in, in front. If at the end of the day okay. I don't fully answer it, ask me again. I will, will address it directly. Okay, okay. Uh, so the signs of, of such include, you know, when you find someone that's lonely, you find them okay. that they overdo things, right? They overshare when when they find someone that will listen to them and it's a topic they are inter they are interested in, they overshare. You know, they overcompensate. Okay. You know, okay. seemingly wanting to come out of it, you know. So you find them overdoing things, you know. Uh they they talk a whole lot about friends. Oh, I want to have friends. Da, 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 da. They they over they, they do a lot of talking about wanting to have friends, wanting to have connection, you know. But overdoing it doesn't help them. It's just that at that point in time, it's just a reaction. And reaction does not help. It has to be a proactive, intentional step to come out, right? It's not you just reacting to the feeling, right? Yeah. Because the, the person's in chain at that point in time is a prisoner, right? So the only way you're going to do to come out of prison is to be proactive and intentional and focused to address the real issues, not just the symptoms, right? So yeah. the thing is also the, such people are the people that get, you know, people that like that get abused, are people that are people that are lonely will, will be throwing themselves about, you know. So you find someone people that is in a relationship where they are abused and they cannot leave, is because they are lonely, right? They are looking for connection. They don't have a they have not rightly valued or priced themselves. So they sell themselves cheap. Right, mm. they can they can even prostitute for the seeming person that is connecting to them, right? Because they feel that they don't have any no other person will price them, right? I I, I once cancelled uh a Malaysian lady, you know who, who called who called me for who we who, who would I were chatting together canceling her, you know she had a Cameroonian boyfriend who was living in a house. You know, that Cameroonian boyfriend was physically abusing her, right? And um, she was the one, that Cameroonian boyfriend wasn't working. She was the one sponsoring him, his leaving style, you know. Hmm. Yet, she did not want to leave him because she said that if she leaves him, no other, she does, she thinks no other person would love her. She won't find someone else, right? Hmm. That is a, that is a sign of someone that's lonely, someone that's not has no value you know, of, of him or herself, you know, so they, they seemingly throw themselves in trying to fight the loneliness, right? Because almost they, they've never connected to someone, this one person looks their direction. They will almost like do anything to keep that person, right? So when you find someone that is always putting other people's need before their own, you know, <laughs> There's a there's a there's a, there's, there's possibly a loneliness in 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 that person's life, you know. When you and, and you know, I used to think that you could if you kill yourself for somebody that is love, but, but that's not true, right? Killing yourself for somebody is not necessarily love. Love will do that, but just killing yourself doesn't mean that you love somebody, you know. So if you look at First Corinthians thirteen, it, it says that even if you kill yourself, but without love, that is nothing. Meaning that it's possible to kill yourself for someone without loving the person. It could just be because you are looking for something. You are trying to get out of jail. Not necessarily because you love that person, right? So, so just because someone kills or gives their life doesn't mean they, they did it out of love. It might just be out of trying to come out of the loneliness in their life, right? So... Yeah. But you find people like that because they are lonely, they are depressed, right? You know, also, if you if you find someone that is feeling the need to overly help or be nice, that person is lonely. Mm. Right? If someone is feels uh, what we call nizaolic or, or, or compulsive niceness, right? You're, the niceness that does not make sense, you know, is because the person is lonely, is looking for association. It's not because of love. Love is not a compulsive niceness. Love might be compulsive goodness, not niceness. Niceness and goodness are not the same thing. 
right? If you're if you are compulsively nice, it's because you are lonely, right? Meaning there are times that your your being good might mean that you are not nice to some people, right? God is not a nice God. God is a good look God. Meaning God can kill someone. If you're a nice person, you can't kill anybody. Niceness does not kill. Goodness will kill. Because if goodness sees that killing you is better for you, it will be good for you, it will kill you. But niceness will never see killing as, as being good for you. Because it's always trying to win your approval. Niceness wants to win your approval. Goodness is doing what is good for you. Not necessarily, whether you like the person or not, it's, it's immaterial. Right? So, those yeah. are like symptoms of someone that might be lonely. Did you want to say something before I continue? No, 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 no. You can go ahead. Okay. All right. So, typically, another sign of loneliness is the person just feels empty, is alone, and feels unwanted, feels undesirable, right? Feels isolated. He, he feels invisible, that nobody's seeing me, right? He feels like he doesn't belong to anybody, to anywhere, or to anything, right? You know, could he could also be someone that is obs obsessed with friendship, you know, just friends, 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 friends. You don't want to be friends, you know. It, it's it's a it, it's a cra it could, anyone that is craving for human contact, oh no, but their state of mind. You know, when, like I say again, in all of this, trying to pursue these things, they they do things, they want to friendship, but what they do simply takes them away from friends. You know, if you have someone that is compulsively nice, you cannot be friends with that person because they, they'll be so nice that they will irritate you, right? But the person that wanting to be nice is doing it because he wants to be your friend, you know? But you would then get irritated by that seeming compulsiveness, right? So they, they're doing things to be close to people, but they're doing it, overdoing it in such a way that it gets the wrong result, you know, of what they are trying to achieve.